So what I was doing there was using the bearing buster to drive it forward onto the bearing assembly right here. And you can see that this shaft is actually pretty rusted. So it took some effort to get that off. I'll have a full YouTube video on this soon, but I just wanted to show you how this tool is used. Have you All right, it? people, welcome back to the channel here. So we have some blower bearings to change back there. Now, that style of bearing right there is sometimes tough to get out because it's wedged in that spider bracket right there and it's hard to get a puller around it. The fact that we have some bolts there do help because we can unbolt those and put a puller on and pull it off. But I have something special I wanna to try today that I've never tried before. And this is the Supco bearing buster. Basically it gets in behind the bearing on the shaft and you use these handles once you've lubricated the bearing up to push it forward. And once you push it past that spot where it's stuck and you have the clean shaft and the lubricated shaft, you should just be able to yank it forward with your fingers. So we're going to try this out today. I've got my bearings right here. Let's oh, go on. This slides right out. And because the wire is long enough, so York thought about this, we can actually take this whole assembly out, put it on the ground to work on it. Now it's very easy to do so. This plate here has some screws in it on the sides. And, and here, and once all that is taken apart, and you might want to take out these clips that hold it down because it does um, provide a little bit of resistance when you pull it out. You can pull this whole assembly out and put it on the ground to You're work gonna on You're going to want to use some good penetrating oil, and what I do is I spray everything down, let it sit and rest for a while. Obviously, we have to take this pulley off too, so I have a set of pullers for that, and we have to clean the shaft up because you can see sorry my shadows in the way but you can see it's pretty rusted there so we're going to spray everything down we're going to clean what we can and then we're going to go to town pull so this i apart. have everything lubed up i even take the set screw out here and i put some lubrication in there because and then it gets in between the shaft and the pulley itself now because this key is in the way it's really hard to get your sandpaper your emery cloth flush against this whole entire shaft and you can see that it's still got a little bit of rust on it but I'm not worried because this puller uh, works really well and you can see the difference between uh, where the key is and where it's not you can see how clean that shaft is because we can get the the uh, emery cloth really flush with the shaft there here it's not as as clean but like I said with the puller and the lubrication we should be able to pull that off no problem now, I like to use my ratcheting wrench. I have a Wera Joker wrench that I put on the edge of this, but I don't have them up here, and it's a good long walk back to the truck up and down a ladder. So I'm just gonna use an adjustable wrench because I don't think I'm gonna have any problems here. And as you can see, I'm not having any issues because that pulley seems to be sliding off really, really well. I always bring these Viper wipes up when I do bearings and stuff because as you know when you do bearings and whatnot because you're lubricating and you have a lot of dirt and stuff and rust on the shaft your hands tend to get dirty but let me show you why this bearing needs to be changed see that right there that is play in the actual rubber sleeve that goes around the bearing insert the bearing itself is not moving in the rubber it's it's the rubber that is worn and it's causing the shaft to move back and forth so whenever you see that you really got to replace that because you don't want to have this going back and forth like this during operation because it can cause damage to other things and cause the blower to kind of not run properly and i'll show you here in the front what it looks so like if i grab a hold of the shaft you can see how the rubber there has worn down sitting inside of this piece right here and it's moving back and forth that's an indication that the bearing needs to be replaced. So we have to clean up the rest of the shaft here. And once that's done, what we can do is undo the set screw on the locking collar. Once that is undone, there's another small opening right here. You can get like a punch in there. And basically what you wanna do is punch it in the opposite direction of the blower rotation. And what that will do is that will spin it and get it loose and you can pull that locking collar right off. Okay, so what I found with this particular spider bracket is there's not a lot of space in the back. There's a very small gap, which is not the norm I usually find. I usually find that the opening is quite large, that the whole tool can fit back there, or the whole tool should be able to fit back there and hit the bearing. But what I'm finding with this spider bracket is that the tool is actually hitting the back of this piece here and not the back of the bearing. So what I've done 
is I've loosened these bolts about a quarter inch just so it doesn't fall down and I'm going to try to top the whole assembly forward that way once we get to the the heads of the screws we're forward enough where we should be able to loosen the screws right off or the bolts right off and bang this whole thing forward so let's try this out so now we got really close to the heads of the screws here when I was tapping so I've backed them out a little bit more and we're gonna go tap it again Okay, so this bearing is extremely tight, but it is moving and what I'm finding is if I give this a really hard pull towards me and put my feet up on the blower housing and pull really hard, it's actually penetrating past inside of here and it's actually pushing the bearing out and I'm watching. So where the set screw was, um, the, the bearing was actually further back from the set screw a minute or two ago, so I know it's moving. It's almost past that point where it's seized up. Once we get it past this little set screw spot, I think we'll be good. All right, so it's off, and the way I was sitting, I suggest you don't sit like that if you, <laughs> if you uh, can avoid it, because what happened is my last yank on the bearing buster, the bearing shot off. And hit me in an unmentionable location so just be careful of that when you're so let using me just show you this originally I thought that the bearing buster wasn't getting past this part of the uh, the housing for the bearing but when I pull it out and do this it goes inside no problem so what I think was happening I don't think I was holding this true to the shaft and when I was bringing it forward I think it was going up or down on a bit of an angle so if you hold it true to the shaft you keep it steady and you come forward you should be able to penetrate through this opening all right and when I was penetrating through that opening is when I was getting movement this shaft as you can see it is pretty rough it is very rusted this bearing has been on there since day one it hasn't been changed before this is about a 12 or 13 year old unit so we had to use a little bit of grunt work to get it off but inevitably we got the bearing off and we got it off with this this actually comes in a in three different sizes this is the one inch comes in a three quarter inch and it comes in a one and a quarter inch as well so just be known that you might have to apply some force to get this off some of them will come off easy this one was a little bit tougher and we had to apply some grunt force to get that thing off but good tool it works happy HVACing